Yee, an American rapper, singer, songwriter, record producer, and fashion designer, was born on June 8, 1977, in Atlanta and raised in Chicago. In the early 2000s, he gained recognition as a producer for Rocky Fella Records, developing the Chipmunk Soul sampling style and producing singles for several artists. However, he was determined to pursue a solo career as a rapper and released his debut studio album, The College Dropout, 2004, which was both commercially and critically successful. The same year, he founded the record label Good Music. West's subsequent albums, Late Registration, 2005, Graduation, 2007, and 808s and Heartbreak, 2008, showcased his musical diversity, incorporating elements like orchestras, synthesizers, and autotune. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, 2010, and Yeezus, 2013, also received critical and commercial acclaim. With The Life of Pablo, 2016, Yee, 2018, and Jesus is King, 2019, West continued to explore different musical styles, including Christian and gospel music. West's discography also includes collaborative albums Watch the Throne, 2011, with Jay-Z and Kids See Ghosts, 2018, with Kid Cudi. He has sold over 160 million records and won 24 Grammy Awards, the joint 10th most of all time and the joint most Grammy Awards of any rapper along with Jay-Z. West has also won several other awards, including the Billboard Artist Achievement Award, three Brit Awards for Best International Male Solo Artist, and the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award. West has been recognized for his contributions to music and fashion, with Rolling Stone including six of his albums on their 202500 Greatest Albums of All Time list and naming him one of the 100 Greatest Songwriters of All Time. He also holds the joint record, with Bob Dylan, for most albums, four, topping the annual Paz and Jop critic poll. Time named him one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2005 and 2015. As a fashion designer, he has collaborated with Nike, Louis Vuitton, Gap, and APC on clothing and footwear and led the Yeezy collaboration with Adidas. West is also the founder and head of the creative content company Donda. West's public image has been marked by controversy stemming from his outspoken views, conduct on social media, and comments on various industries, politics, race, and slavery. His Christian faith, marriage to Kim Kardashian, and mental health have also attracted media attention. In 2020, he launched an unsuccessful independent presidential campaign centered around a consistent life ethic. However, in 2022, West faced widespread condemnation and lost several partnerships, including collaborations with Adidas, Gap, and Balenciaga, after making a series of anti-Semitic statements. In November 2022, West announced his 2024 presidential campaign and publicly associated himself with Nick Fuentes, a known white supremacist. West's subsequent statements, including praise for Adolf Hitler, denial of the Holocaust, and identification as a Nazi, have caused further outrage and condemnation. Born in Atlanta, Georgia on June 8, 1977, West moved to Chicago with his mother after his parents divorced when he was three. His father, Ray West, was a former Black Panther and photographer, while his mother, Donda C. West, was a professor of English. West attended Polaris School in suburban Oak Lawn, Illinois, before moving with his mother to Nanjing, China, where she was teaching. He displayed a talent for the arts at an early age, writing poetry from the age of five and starting to rap in the third grade. After graduating from high school, West attended the American Academy of Art in Chicago before transferring to Chicago State University to study English. However, he dropped out at age 20 to pursue music, much to his mother's initial displeasure. His talent for music composition led to him selling his work to other artists, and he crossed paths with producer No ID, who became his friend and mentor. West embarked on his production career in the mid-1990s, initially creating beats for local artists in his area. He received his first official production credits at 19 years old for producing eight tracks on Chicago rapper Grav's debut album Down to Earth in 1996. West was then signed to management production company Hip Hop since 1978 in 1998, but due to his association with Derek D. Angela T., he was unable to release a solo album. Instead, he formed the Go Getters, a rap group consisting of him, GLC, Timmy G, Rilly Doe, and Aerostar 
releasing their first and only studio album World Record Holders in 1999. West spent the late 1990s producing records for several well-known artists and groups, including Foxy Brown's China Doll, which became the first hip-hop album by a female rapper to debut at the top of the U.S. Billboard 200 chart. In 2000, West began producing for Rock Hey Fella, contributing to Jay-Z's 2001 album The Blueprint, which is often credited with revitalizing Jay-Z's career and ranked among Rolling Stone's list of greatest hip-hop albums. As an in-house producer for Rock Hey Fella, West also produced music for other artists on the label, such as Beanie Siegel, Freeway, and Cameron, while crafting hit songs for Ludacris, Alicia Keys, and Janet Jackson. Despite his success as a producer, West struggled to secure a record deal as a rapper because he did not fit the gangsta image prominent in mainstream hip-hop at the time. To prevent West from signing with another label, then-label head Damon Dash reluctantly signed him to Rock a Fella. In 2002, West was involved in a car accident that shattered his jaw, and while he was recovering, he recorded Through the Wire, with his jaw still wired shut at the record plant studios two weeks after being admitted to the hospital. The song was included on West's Get Well Soon mixtape, released in December 2002. Around the same time, West announced that he was working on an album called The College Dropout, whose overall theme was to encourage listeners to make your own decisions. Don't let society tell you, this is what you have to do. Following his recovery from the car accident, West recorded the rest of his debut album, The College Dropout, in Los Angeles. The album was leaked several months before its scheduled release giving West an opportunity to remix, remaster, and revise it. He added new verses, string arrangements, gospel choirs, and improved drum programming. The album was postponed three times and was finally released in February 2004. It reached number two on the Billboard 200, and his debut single, Through the Wire, peaked at number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart for five weeks. His second single, Slow Jams, featuring Twista and Jamie Foxx, became the first number one hit for all three musicians. The College Dropout was critically acclaimed and voted the top album of the year by two major music publications. It has consistently been ranked among the great hip-hop works and debut albums by artists. Jesus Walks, the album's fourth single, reached the top 20 of the Billboard pop charts, despite industry executives' predictions that a song containing such blatant declarations of faith would never make it to the radio. The College Dropout was certified triple platinum in the U.S. and earned West 10 Grammy nominations, including Album of the Year and Best Rap Album, which it won. During this time, West founded Good Music, a record label and management company that housed affiliate artists and producers, including No ID and John Legend. He also produced singles for Brandy, Common, Legend, and Slum Village. For his second album, Late Registration, West invested $2 million and took over a year to complete it. He was inspired by Roseland NYC Live, a 1998 live album by English trip-hop group Portishead, which was produced with the New York Philharmonic Orchestra, and incorporated string arrangements into his hip-hop production. Although West had not been able to afford many live instruments for his debut album, his commercial success enabled him to hire a string orchestra for late registration. He collaborated with American film score composer John Brian, who served as the album's co-executive producer for several tracks. Late registration sold over 2.3 million units in the United States alone by the end of 2005 and was considered by industry observers as the only successful major album release of the fall season, which had been plagued by steadily declining CD sales. At the 2006 MTV Europe Music Awards, West's song, Touch the Sky, lost Best Video to Justice and Simeon's, We Are Your Friends, prompting West to storm the stage and argue that he should have won instead. This outburst was widely criticized by numerous news outlets around the world. However, on November 7, 2006, during his performance as a support act for U2's Vertigo concert in Brisbane, West publicly apologized for the incident. Later on, during the 33rd season premiere of Saturday Night Live in September 2007, he spoofed the incident. West's release of his third studio album, Graduation, in September 2007 marked a highly publicized competition against rapper 50 Cent's album, Curtis. With Graduation debuting at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 chart and selling 957,000 copies in its first week, West continued his streak of critical and commercial success. The album's lead single, Stronger, became his third number one hit and sampled French house duo Daft Punk 
inspiring other hip-hop artists to incorporate house and electronica elements into their music and contributing to the revival of disco and electro-infused music in the late 2000s. However, the death of West's mother in November 2007 and the end of his engagement to Alexis Pfeiffer had a profound impact on him as he set off for his 2008 Glow in the Dark tour shortly thereafter. In November 2008, West released his fourth album, 808s and Heartbreak, which he had announced at the 2008 MTV Video Music Awards, where he performed its lead single, Love Lockdown. The album's production style and use of auto-tune, which deviated from West's usual style, surprised music audiences but had a significant impact on hip-hop music and encouraged other rappers to take more creative risks with their productions. The lead single, Love Lockdown, debuted at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100, while follow-up single, Heartless, debuted at number 4. At the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards, West went on stage and interrupted Taylor Swift's acceptance speech for Best Female Video to proclaim that Beyoncé deserved the award instead. He faced widespread criticism, including from President Barack Obama who called him a jackass and apologized to Swift. However, in a November 2010 interview, West seemed to recant his past apologies, describing the act at the 2009 awards show as selfless. After the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards incident, West briefly shifted his focus to fashion before immersing himself in Hawaii to work on his next album. He brought in his favorite producers and artists, including Jay-Z, Kid Cudi, Pusha T, and Justin Vernon of Bon Iver, to inspire and collaborate on the project. Engineers worked around the clock, with West sleeping in increments. According to Noah Callahan Bever, a writer for Complex who was present during the sessions, the atmosphere was communal, and focused on contributing, challenging, and inspiring each other. West's fifth studio album, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, was released in November 2010 to critical acclaim, with many considering it his best work and a solid comeback. In contrast to his previous minimalist approach, the album's maximalist philosophy explores themes of celebrity and excess. The record features hits such as, All of the Lights, Power, Monster, and, Runaway, which accompanied a 35-minute film directed and starring West. During this time, he also launched Good Fridays, a free music program through his website that offered previously unreleased songs for download each Friday. Some of these tracks were included on the album, which eventually went platinum in the United States. However, the album's exclusion as a contender for Album of the Year at the 54th Grammy Awards was considered a snub by several media outlets. In 2011, West embarked on a festival tour to celebrate the release of My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. He headlined and performed at various festivals, including SWU Music and Arts, Austin City Limits, Oya Festival, Flow Festival, Live Music Festival, The Big Chill, Essence Music Festival, Lollapalooza, and Coachella. The latter was hailed by The Hollywood Reporter as, one of the greatest hip-hop sets of all time. That same year, West collaborated with Jay-Z on the album Watch the Throne, which was released in August 2011. The album's unique sales strategy, which released the digital version before the physical one, made it one of the few major label albums in the internet age to avoid leaking. The single, Niggas in Paris, became the album's highest charting single, peaking at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100. West and Jay-Z then embarked on the co-headlining Watch the Throne tour, which ran from October 2011 to June 2012. In 2012, West released the compilation album Cruel Summer, which features tracks by various artists from his record label, Good Music. In early 2013, West began working on his sixth solo album in the living room of his personal loft at a Paris hotel. Determined to steer away from commercial sounds, he assembled his close collaborators and incorporated elements of Chicago drill, dance hall, acid house, and industrial music. The album's concept was primarily inspired by architecture, and West's perfectionism led him to contact producer Rick Rubin just two weeks before its deadline to strip down the sound to a more minimalist approach. Initial promotion for the album involved worldwide video projections and live TV performances. Yeezus was released on June 18, 2013, to critical acclaim, becoming West's sixth consecutive number one debut, but with lower solo opening week sales. Later that year, West announced his first solo tour in five years to support Yeezus, with Kendrick Lamar as the opening act. The tour received positive reviews, with Rolling Stone describing it as, crazily entertaining, hugely ambitious, emotionally affecting and, most importantly, totally bonkers. 
Forbes praised West for taking risks and challenging norms in mainstream music. West also released several singles featuring Paul McCartney, including Only One and Four Five Seconds with Rihanna. West announced in November 2013 that he had started working on his next studio album and aimed to release it by mid-2014 with production by Rick Rubin and Q-Tip. Initially, he had announced the album's name as Yeezus 2, but in March 2015, West revealed that the album's tentative title would be So Help Me God. In recognition of his contributions to music, fashion, and popular culture, West received an honorary doctorate from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in May 2015. Despite facing petitions to prevent his headlining appearances, West performed at the Glastonbury Festival in the UK in June 2015 and the 2015 Pan American Games in July 2015. In January 2016, West announced that he would release his album Swish on February 11, and also released two new tracks, Real Friends, and a snippet of No More Parties in LA, with Kendrick Lamar. However, on January 26, 2016, West changed the album's name to Waves. In the weeks before the album's release, West became embroiled in several Twitter controversies, which continued after he changed the album's name once again, this time to The Life of Pablo, just before its release on February 14, 2016. West premiered the album at Madison Square Garden as part of the presentation of his Yeezy Season 3 clothing line, and announced that he would modify the tracklist again before its public release. Despite releasing the album exclusively on Tidal at first, West eventually made it available on several other streaming services starting in April. In February 2016, West also announced on Twitter that he planned to release another album in the summer of 2016, which he called Turbo Graphics 16, after a 1990s video game console. In June 2016, he released the lead single, Champions, from the good music album Cruel Winter, which has yet to be released. West also stirred controversy that month by releasing a video for, Famous, featuring wax figures of several celebrities, including himself, his wife, Taylor Swift, Donald Trump, Bill Cosby, and George W. Bush, all sleeping nude in a shared bed. In August 2016, West began the St. Pablo tour in support of the life of Pablo, featuring a mobile stage suspended from the ceiling. However, he postponed several dates in October following the Paris robbery of his wife's possessions, and on November 21, 2016, he cancelled the remaining 21 dates on the tour after a week of erratic behavior, including rants about politics. He was admitted for psychiatric observation at UCLA Medical Center due to temporary psychosis caused by sleep deprivation and dehydration. After this episode, West took a break from posting on Twitter and withdrew from the public eye for 11 months. In May 2017, reports emerged that West was recording new music in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, with a diverse group of collaborators. In April 2018, he announced plans to write a philosophy book called Break the Simulation, but later clarified on Twitter that he was sharing the book in real time, and began posting content that was compared to life coaching. He also revealed two new albums, a solo project and a self-titled collaboration with Kid Cudi as Kid See Ghosts, both slated for release in June. West additionally announced he would produce upcoming albums for fellow good music artists Pusha T and Tiana Taylor, as well as Nas. Soon after, he released the non-album singles, Lift Yourself, a nonsensical track, and Ye vs. The People, featuring T.I. discussing West's controversial support of Donald Trump. Pusha T's Daytona, the first project out of Wyoming, was released in May to critical acclaim, although the album's cover, a photo of Whitney Houston's bathroom that West paid $85,000 to use, stirred controversy. The following week, West released his eighth studio album, Yay! He has since suggested that he scrapped the original recordings of the album and re-recorded it within a month. The week after, he dropped Kid See Ghosts, a collaborative project with Kid Cudi. West also completed production work on Nas Nasir and Tiana Taylor's KTSE, both released in June 2018. In September, West announced his ninth studio album, Yandi, and a collaborative album with fellow Chicagone Chance the Rapper, titled Good Ass Job. He also announced that he would be changing his stage name to, Yee. Although originally scheduled for release in September 2018, Yandi was postponed several times. In January 2019, West pulled out of headlining that year's Coachella Festival due to disagreements over stage design. In July, songs from Yandi were leaked online. The following month, Kim Kardashian announced that West's next album would be called Jesus is King, effectively replacing Yandi. 
By October, the unfinished Yandi album was briefly available on streaming services Spotify and Tidal. In May 2017, reports emerged that West was recording new music in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, with a variety of collaborators. In April 2018, West announced plans to write a philosophy book called Break the Simulation, which he later clarified was being shared, in real time, on Twitter and included content that resembled, life coaching. He also revealed plans to release two albums in June, a solo album and a self-titled collaboration with Kid Cudi under the name Kids See Ghosts. Additionally, he announced his intention to produce upcoming albums by good music label mates Pusha T and Tiana Taylor, as well as Nas. Later that month, West released two non-album singles, Lift Yourself, and, Ye vs. The People, the latter featuring T.I. and discussing West's controversial support of Donald Trump. Pusha T's Daytona was the first project out of Wyoming and released in May to critical acclaim, though the album's artwork, a photo of Whitney Houston's bathroom that West paid $85,000 to license, generated controversy. West released his eighth studio album, Ye, the following week, and then a collaborative album with Kid Cudi, titled Kid See Ghosts, named after their group of the same name. West also completed production work on Nas Nasir and Tiana Taylor's KTSE, which were released in June 2018. In September, West announced his ninth studio album Yandi to be released by the end of the month and a collaborative album with Chance the Rapper titled Good Ass Job. West changed his stage name to Ye that same month, and although Yandi was originally set for release in September 2018, it was postponed several times. Negotiations broke down with Coachella regarding stage design, and West pulled out of headlining the festival in January 2019. In July, songs from West's unreleased album Yandi were leaked online, and the following month, Kim Kardashian announced that West's next album would be titled Jesus is King, effectively cancelling Yandi. By October, the entire unfinished album was briefly available on streaming services Spotify and Tidal. On January 6, 2019, West began his weekly, Sunday service, orchestration, attended by various celebrities, including the Kardashians, Charlie Wilson, and Kid Cudi. He previewed a new song, Water, at Coachella 2019, which later appeared on Jesus is King, released on October 25, 2019. The album topped five Billboard charts simultaneously, including the Billboard 200, top R&B hip-hop albums, top rap albums, top Christian albums, and top gospel albums. On December 25, 2019, West and Sunday Service released Jesus is Born, containing 19 songs, including reworkings of older West songs. West released a single called, Wash Us in the Blood, on June 30, 2020, featuring Travis Scott, along with the music video, which was set to serve as the lead single from his upcoming 10th studio album Donda. However, in September 2020, West announced he would not release any more music until he was, done with his contract with Sony and Universal. On October 16, he released the single, Na Na Na. West held multiple listening parties at Mercedes-Benz Stadium for Donda in the summer of 2021, where he temporarily resided in one of the stadium's locker rooms, converting it into a recording studio to complete the album. After several delays, Donda was released on August 29, 2021, though West claimed the album was released prematurely without his approval and accused Universal of altering the tracklist. On November 14, 2021, after putting an end to their long-standing feud, Kanye West and rapper Drake announced on November 20th that they would organize the Free Larry Hoover charity concert at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum on December 9th. On January 5, 2022, it was announced that West would be one of the headliners for the 2022 Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. Later in the same month, on January 15, he released the first single from his upcoming album Donda 2, called Easy, featuring the game. The album is set to be executive produced by American rapper Future. A listening event for the album was held by West at Loandapot Park in Miami, Florida on February 22. However, shortly before Coachella, West withdrew as the headlining act and also withdrew from headlining at Rolling Loud. West performed with the game on July 22, marking his first performance in five months since he had been keeping a low profile while working on Donda 2. Although he had cancelled his headlining spot, he made an appearance at Rolling Loud during Lil Durk's set on the following day. In December 2022, after making several controversial anti-Semitic statements, West released a new song titled, Someday We'll All Be Free, on his Instagram account. 
West is known for his diverse musical style and frequent artistic experimentation throughout his career. He has been praised for his ability to blend multiple genres into his music while maintaining pop sensibilities, resulting in a unique and progressive style of hip-hop. According to Ed Ledsham of Pop Matters, West's musical approach challenges the traditional notion of what constitutes true, art, music, as he often incorporates a range of different musical elements. West's lyrical ability has also been highly regarded, with his rhymes being described as both humorous and insightful. He is known for seamlessly transitioning between sharp social commentary, confident boasting, and introspective sensitivity in his lyrics. West has made a conscious effort to ensure that his lyrics are accessible to listeners of all backgrounds, saying that he aims to sound, just as ill as Jadakiss and just as understandable as Will Smith. One of West's early contributions to hip-hop was the development of Chipmunk Soul, a unique production style that involved manipulating the tempo of vintage soul samples to create a high-pitched, chipmunk-like sound. This innovative sampling technique helped to establish West as a pioneer of modern hip-hop production. West's debut studio album, The College Dropout, 2004, showcased the defining features of his style, including intricate hip-hop beats, inventive wordplay, and topical subject matter, deviating from the dominant gangster persona of hip-hop at the time. The album explored a range of diverse themes, such as materialism, self-consciousness, institutional prejudice, family, sexuality, and class struggle, drawing from his middle-class upbringing and struggles in the music industry. West's subsequent albums have embraced a variety of music genres, including chamber pop on late registration, 2005, arena rock and europop on graduation, 2007, synth-driven electropop on 808s and heartbreak, 2008, and experimental styles like acid house, drill, industrial rap, and trap on Yeezus, 2013. West explored gospel and Christian rap on The Life of Pablo, 2016, Jesus is King, 2019, and Donda, 2021, and psychedelic music on Kids See Ghosts, 2018. In the beginning of his career, West expressed his interest in fashion and his aspiration to work in the clothing design industry. He launched his own clothing line in the spring of 2006, which he worked on for four years before it was eventually cancelled in 2009. In January 2007, West collaborated with a bathing ape to release a special edition Bepesta sneaker. Later in 2009, he became the first non-athlete to be given a shoe deal with Nike, releasing his own shoe line called the Air Yeezys. During Paris Fashion Week in January 2009, West introduced his first shoe line designed for Louis Vuitton, which was released in the summer of the same year. West has also designed shoewear for Italian shoemaker Giuseppe Zanotti. West moved to Rome in the fall of 2009 and interned at Italian fashion brand Fendi, providing ideas for the men's collection. In March 2011, he collaborated with M. M. Paris for a series of silk scarves featuring artwork from My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. In October 2011, West debuted his women's fashion label at Paris Fashion Week, which received mixed to negative reviews. He premiered a second fashion line at Paris Fashion Week in March 2012, which was deemed by critics as a significant improvement from his first show. On December 3, 2013, Adidas confirmed a new shoe collaboration deal with West. Months of anticipation and rumors led to the release of the Adidas Yeezy Boosts. In 2015, West launched a Yeezy clothing line in collaboration with Adidas. In June 2016, Adidas announced a new long-term contract with West, which expanded the Yeezy line to a variety of stores, planning to sell sports performance products like basketball, football, and soccer. However, Adidas terminated their partnership with West in October 2022 due to his anti-Semitic remarks. In May 2021, West signed a 10-year deal with Gap to link Yeezy with the brand, but in September 2022, West announced that he was ending the deal. In 2004, shortly after releasing his debut album The College Dropout, West established the record label and production company Good Music in collaboration with Sony BMG. Common, John Legend, and West were the label's inaugural artists. Among the label's artists are Big Sean, Pusha T, Tiana Taylor, Yazin Bey Mos Def, DeBonge, and John Legend, as well as producers including Hudson Mohawk, Q-Tip, Travis Scott, No ID, Jeff Boscar, and S1. Ten good music albums have been certified gold or higher by the Recording Industry Association of America, RIAA. In November 2015, Pusha T was named the new president of good music by West.
In 2008, West announced his plans to open 10 Fatburger restaurants in the Chicago area, with the first set to open in Orland Park in September of that year. KW Foods LLC, West's company, bought the rights to the chain in Chicago. However, only two locations actually opened in 2009, and both eventually closed. The Orland Park location shut down in February 2011, and the Beverly location followed later that year. West established the creative content company Donda in January 2012, named after his late mother. The company aims to make products and experiences that people want and can afford, and West proclaimed that it would pick up where Steve Jobs left off. He emphasized the importance of bringing creatives together to simplify and aesthetically improve everything that people see, taste, touch, and feel. Despite being notoriously secretive about the company's operations, contemporary critics have noted the consistent minimalistic aesthetic exhibited throughout Donda's creative projects. In 2013, West expressed interest in branching out beyond music and fashion, stating that he wanted to start an architecture firm that would allow him to explore product design, architecture, and more. He delivered a manifesto outlining his goals during a visit to Harvard Graduate School of Design later that year. In 2018, West announced the formation of Yeezy Home, an architecture firm that would operate as an arm of his successful Yeezy fashion label. The first Yeezy Home collaboration was announced in June of that year, teasing an affordable concrete prefabricated home as part of a social housing project. West is also a co-owner of the music streaming service Tidal, which specializes in lossless audio and high-definition music videos. The service was acquired by Jay-Z's parent company, Espiro, in 2015, with 16 artist stakeholders including Jay-Z, Rihanna, Beyoncé, Madonna, Chris Martin, and Nicki Minaj co-owning Tidal, with the majority owning a 3% equity stake. However, in October 2022, West faced bans on Twitter and Instagram due to his anti-Semitic comments and subsequently reached an agreement in principle to acquire the alt-tech social network Parler for an undisclosed amount. However, West and Parler mutually agreed to terminate the proposed deal in mid-November. In 2003, West and his mother established the Kanye West Foundation in Chicago, which aimed to combat high dropout and illiteracy rates among underprivileged youth by providing access to music education. In 2007, the foundation partnered with Strong American Schools for their Ed in 08 campaign, with West serving as a spokesman and hosting a benefit concert. After the passing of his mother in 2008, the foundation was renamed The Doctor. Donda West Foundation but ultimately ended its operations in 2011. In 2013, West and Rhymefest founded Donda's House, Inc., a program designed to assist at-risk youth in Chicago. West has also made several philanthropic contributions over the years, including participating in benefit concerts for Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Sandy, and donating $10 million towards the completion of the Roden Crater. In June 2020, he donated $2 million to support the families of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor, covering legal fees and establishing a 529 plan for Floyd's daughter's college education. West has made several appearances in films and television shows throughout his career. In 2005, he had a cameo as himself in State Property 2, and in 2007, he appeared as himself in an episode of Entourage. He also had a small role as himself in the 2008 film The Love Guru. West provided the voice for the character, Kenny West, in the animated sitcom The Cleveland Show. In addition to his acting work, West has also directed and starred in several short films. He wrote, directed, and starred in the musical short film Runaway, 2010, which featured music from his album My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. The film tells the story of a man in a relationship with a half-woman, half-phoenix creature. West also directed a short film called Cruel Summer, 2012, which premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in a custom pyramid-shaped screening pavilion. The film was inspired by the compilation album of the same name. In 2013, West had a cameo in the comedy Anchorman 2. The legend continues, playing an MTV News representative in the film's fight scene. In 2018, West announced the launch of his film production company, Half Beast, LLC. The company's first project was a documentary titled Gene Yuz, which features footage of West's early days in Chicago through the death of his mother in his presidential run. The documentary was acquired by Netflix for $30 million and was released in 2021. On July 4, 2020, Kanye West announced his intention to run in the 2020 presidential election on Twitter. In an interview with Forbes on July 7, 
he revealed that his running mate would be Wyoming preacher Michelle Tidball, and that he would run as an independent candidate under the birthday party name. West explained that the name was chosen because when they win, it would be everybody's birthday. He also stated that he no longer supported Trump and criticized his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. West's decision to run for president was met with speculation from political pundits who believed it was a publicity stunt to promote his latest music releases. However, on July 15, 2020, official paperwork was filed with the Federal Election Commission for West under the BDY party affiliation, despite claims that he was preparing to drop out. He held his first rally on July 19, where he aligned himself with the philosophy of a consistent life ethic, a tenet of Christian democracy. West's platform included endorsing environmental stewardship, supporting the arts, strengthening faith-based organizations, restoring school prayer, providing for a strong national defense, and promoting America First diplomacy. In a July 2020 interview with Forbes, West admitted his lack of knowledge on issues such as taxes and foreign policy. On November 4, 2020, West publicly conceded the presidential race on Twitter. He obtained a total of 66,365 votes in the 12 states where he was on the ballot, averaging 0.32%. In addition, he received an additional 3,931 reported write-in votes across five states, and the Roque de la Fuente Kanye West ticket received 60,160 votes in California, representing 0.34% of the total vote. According to a Reuters report on January 4, 2021, a publicist linked to West pressured a Georgia election worker to confess to false charges of election tampering in order to support Trump's claims of election interference. In December 2021, The Daily Beast published an article stating that West's presidential campaign had received millions of dollars in services from a covert network of Republican operatives, whose payments were not reported by the campaign committee. This was done, according to campaign finance experts, to conceal the connection between West's campaign and the Republican operatives. West has declared his plan to run for president again in the 2024 presidential election. During an event in November 2019, he stated, When I run for president in 2024, we would have created so many jobs that I'm not going to run, I'm going to walk, which was met with laughter from the audience. While running for president in October 2020, West told Joe Rogan on his podcast that he would be open to running for governor of California. On May 19, 2021, Fox News obtained a letter regarding an exploratory presidential committee, and West's representatives stated that he had not decided whether to become a candidate for president in the 2024 election. However, in subsequent interviews, merchandise, and song lyrics, West repeatedly suggested that he would indeed run. On November 20, 2022, West officially announced his intention to run in the 2024 election. Throughout his career, West has been a controversial and outspoken celebrity, receiving criticism from mainstream media, industry colleagues, and three U.S. presidents. In a 2005 speech, West criticized the government's racial disparities in response to Hurricane Katrina, stating on live television that, George Bush doesn't care about black people. In 2013, he voiced his opposition to abortion, citing his belief in the Sixth Commandment, and in 2022 he called abortion, genocide and population control, of black people. West also made controversial comments about the enslavement of Africans, saying it sounds like a choice, before later apologizing. However, in late 2022, West made a series of anti-Semitic statements that resulted in the termination of his collaborations, sponsorships, and partnerships with several companies, including Vogue, CAA, Balenciaga, Gap, and Adidas. He was widely condemned after appearing at a dinner hosted by Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago alongside white nationalist Nick Fuentes. In a subsequent December appearance on Alex Jones's Infowars, West praised Adolf Hitler, denied the Holocaust, and identified as a Nazi. Following the interview, West's Twitter account was terminated after he posted an image depicting a swastika entangled within a Star of David. The School of the Art Institute of Chicago also rescinded West's honorary degree. According to a 2023 report published by the Anti-Defamation League, West's anti-Semitic rhetoric has led to instances of hate speech vandalism, harassment, and violence across the United States. In 2021, West's net worth reached as high as $1.8 billion. However, in October 2022, Forbes estimated his net worth to have declined to $400 million, largely due to the termination of his partnership with Adidas after a series of public anti-Semitic statements. 
In August 2021, West applied to legally change his name from Kanye Omari West to simply Yi, with no middle or last name, citing personal reasons. The request was granted in October of that year. West had expressed a desire to change his name since 2018 and had been using Yi as a nickname for several years prior. In a 2018 interview, he explained that Yi was the most commonly used word in the Bible and meant you, representing both himself and his audience. West and Kim Kardashian, a reality television star, began dating in April 2012 after being friends for a long time. They got engaged in October 2013 and exchanged vows in May 2014 at Fort di Belvedere in Florence, Italy. Despite their efforts to keep their wedding private, it attracted widespread media attention that West was not happy about. Their marriage has been a subject of intense media scrutiny, with the New York Times referring to it as a historic blizzard of celebrity. The couple has four children, Northwest, born in June 2013, St. West, born in December 2015, Chicago West, born via surrogate in January 2018, and Sam West, also born via surrogate in May 2019. During a presidential campaign rally in July 2020, West disclosed that he had once considered abortion during Kardashian's first pregnancy, but has since changed his stance and now opposes abortion. In April 2015, West and Kardashian traveled to Jerusalem to have North baptized at the Cathedral of St. James in the Armenian Apostolic Church. Their other children were also baptized in the Armenian Church, at the Etchmiadzin Cathedral, in October 2019. In September 2018, West announced plans to establish his Yeezy Company headquarters in Chicago and move back there permanently. However, this plan did not come to fruition, and he ended up purchasing two ranches near Cody, Wyoming, where he recorded his eighth solo studio album, Ye. While West moved into a home across the street from the California home owned by the now-divorced couple, Kardashian and their children continued to reside there. In the fall of 2021, West began the process of selling his Wyoming ranch. In July 2020, West publicly acknowledged the possibility of his marriage with Kardashian coming to an end due to his anti-abortion views. He later tweeted that he had been trying to divorce Kardashian, and that the Kardashian family was trying to lock him up. In January 2021, CNN reported that the couple were discussing divorce. The divorce was filed by Kardashian a month later, citing irreconcilable differences. The couple agreed to joint custody of their children and declined spousal support from each other. The divorce was finalized in November 2022, and West was ordered to pay $200,000 per month in child support and share responsibility for the children's medical, educational, and security expenses. In 2002, West began an intermittent relationship with designer Alexis Pfeiffer, and they got engaged in August 2006. However, they ended their engagement in 2008, and Pfeiffer stated that they split up amicably and remained friends. West then dated model Amber Rose from 2008 to mid-2010, and following their split, West stated in an interview that he had to take 30 showers before committing to his next relationship with Kim Kardashian. In response, Rose claimed that West had bullied and slut-shamed her during their relationship. In January 2022, actress Julia Fox confirmed in an essay interview that she was dating West. West expressed that he wanted his family back and publicly criticized Kardashian's new boyfriend, comedian Pete Davidson. West's treatment of Davidson and Kardashian was deemed harassment and abusive by commentators, and the 64th annual Grammy Awards removed him as a performer in response to his concerning online behavior. However, less than two months after confirming their relationship, Fox stated that she and West had broken up but remained on good terms. She later admitted that she only dated West to give people something to talk about during the COVID-19 pandemic and to get him off Kim's case. As of January 2023, reports emerged that West had participated in a private ceremony in Beverly Hills, in which he informally married Australian architect Bianca Sensori, who works for his Yeezy brand. However, the couple did not file for a marriage license, so the ceremony had no legal standing. West subsequently made trips to Australia to visit Sensory's family, which prompted Australian Minister for Education Jason Clare to comment that West might be denied a visa due to his recent anti-Semitic remarks. The Executive Council of Australian Jewry also voiced opposition to granting West entry. Robert Evil Knievel filed a lawsuit against West in December 2006 for trademark infringement of his name and image in West's Touch the Sky music video, 
in which West portrayed a character named, Evil Knievel. Knievel claimed that the video was vulgar, offensive, and sexually charged, damaging his reputation. The lawsuit sought monetary damages and an injunction to prevent distribution of the video. West's legal team argued that the video constituted satire and was therefore protected under the First Amendment. Knievel settled the case amicably with West before his death in November 2007, saying that he found West to be a gentleman. In 2014, West was sentenced to two years probation and ordered to attend 24 anger management sessions, perform 250 hours of community service, and pay restitution to a paparazzo whom he had assaulted at the Los Angeles airport. He was convicted of misdemeanor battery. In 2015, West settled a separate civil lawsuit with the paparazzo, just before the trial. According to TMZ, a judge granted West's appeal to have his conviction expunged from his criminal record in 2016. Following the success of his song, Jesus Walks, from the College Dropout album, West was asked about his beliefs and responded, I will say that I'm spiritual. I have accepted Jesus as my savior. And I will say that I fall short every day. In a 2008 interview with The Fader, West described himself as a vessel, chosen by God to be a voice and a connector. During a 2009 interview with Bossip magazine, West stated that although he believed in God, he did not feel he would ever follow a religion. At one of his concerts in 2014, West referred to himself as a Christian. According to Kim Kardashian in September 2019, West had an amazing evolution of being born again and being saved by Christ. In October 2019, West spoke of his past and how serving multiple gods drove him crazy, referring to the gods of ego, money, pride, and fame. He went on to say that he did not even know what it meant to be saved but that he now loves Jesus Christ and Christianity. In September 2012, West made a $1,000 donation to the re-election campaign of Barack Obama. He followed up by donating $2,700 to Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign in August 2015 and $15,000 to the Democratic National Committee in October 2014. In December 2016, West met with then-President-elect Donald Trump to discuss topics such as bullying, teacher support, education, and violence in Chicago. Although West had previously stated he would have voted for Trump had he voted, in February 2017, he deleted all of his pro-Trump tweets, citing disagreement with the travel ban and other policies. He renewed his support for Trump in April 2018 and made a donation to Amara Inya, a progressive candidate for Chicago mayor, in October 2018. That same month, West expressed support for the Blexit movement, which was initiated by conservative commentator Candace Owens with whom he had a prior association. On November 19, 2016, West ended a concert abruptly before being committed to the UCLA Medical Center at the recommendation of authorities, due to hallucinations and paranoia. Initially, the episode was attributed to temporary psychosis, caused by dehydration and sleep deprivation, but West's condition was severe enough for his 21 cancelled concerts to be covered by his insurance policy. He was reportedly paranoid and depressed during his hospitalization, but was never formally diagnosed. Some speculated that the robbery of his wife in Paris may have triggered his paranoia. West was released from the hospital on November 30th. In his song, FML, and in his featured verse on Vic Mensa's, You Mad, West refers to using the antidepressant medication Lexapro. In an unreleased song titled, I Feel Like That, he mentions experiencing common symptoms of depression and anxiety. In a 2018 interview, West revealed that he had become addicted to opioids after they were prescribed to him following liposuction. The addiction may have contributed to his breakdown in 2016. West also admitted to experiencing suicidal ideation. He was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 2016, although the diagnosis was not made public until his 2018 album Ye. He later told President Donald Trump that it was a misdiagnosis. In 2019, he reportedly accepted the diagnosis again, but in 2022 he suggested that it may have been a misdiagnosis and that he may be autistic. West is widely regarded as one of the most critically acclaimed popular music artists of the 21st century, receiving praise from music critics, fans, industry peers, and wider cultural figures. In 2014, NME named him the third most influential artist in music. Billboard senior editor Alex Gale declared West, one of the best, and you could make the argument for the best artist of the 21st century. Dave Bry of Complex Magazine called West the 21st century's most important artist of any art form, of any genre.
The Atlantic writer David Samuels noted West's wild creativity and expressiveness, his mastery of form, and his deep and uncompromising attachment to a self-made aesthetic. Joe Muggs of The Guardian argued that, there is nobody else who can sell as many records as West does, while remaining so resolutely experimental and capable of stirring things up culturally and politically. Rolling Stone credited West with transforming hip-hop's mainstream, establishing a style of introspective yet glossy rap, while deeming him, a producer who created a signature sound and then abandoned it to his imitators, a flashy, free-spending sybarite with insightful things to say about college, culture, and economics, an egomaniac with more than enough artistic firepower to back it up. Shazab Hussain of Heis Nabiety stated that West's first three albums cemented his role as a progressive rap progenitor. All music editor Jason Berkmeyer described West as shattering certain stereotypes about rappers, becoming a superstar on his own terms without adapting his appearance, his rhetoric, or his music to fit any one musical mold. Lawrence Burney of Noisy credited West with the commercial decline of the gangster rap genre that once dominated mainstream hip-hop. The release of his third studio album has been described as a turning point in the music industry, and is considered to have helped pave the way for new rappers who did not follow the hardcore gangster mold to find wider mainstream acceptance. West's influence can be seen in the work of hip-hop artists like Drake, Nicki Minaj, Travis Scott, Lil Uzi Vert, and Chance the Rapper. Many other artists and music groups across various genres have named West as an influence on their work. West has achieved significant commercial success and critical acclaim for his music. He is the fourth highest certified artist in the U.S. by digital singles, with 69 million certifications. During the 2000s, West had the most RIAA digital song certifications by a male artist and was the fourth best-selling digital songs artist in the U.S. In Spotify's first decade from 2008 to 2018, West was the sixth most streamed artist and the fourth fastest artist to reach 1 billion streams. He also holds the joint record for the most consecutive studio albums to debut at number one on the Billboard 200, with nine. Additionally, West ranked third on Billboard's 2000s decade-end list of top producers and has topped the annual Paz and Jop Critics poll four times with four albums, tying with Bob Dylan. West has been nominated for 75 Grammy Awards, winning 24. He has been the most nominated act at five ceremonies and has received the fourth most wins overall in the 2000s. In 2008, West became the first solo artist to have his first three albums receive nominations for Album of the Year. He has also won several awards, including a Webby Award for Artist of the Year, an Accessories Council Excellence Award for being a Stylemaker, International Man of the Year at the GQ Awards, a Clio Award for the Life of Pablo album experience, and an honor by the Recording Academy. West is one of eight acts to have won the Billboard Artist Achievement Award, in 2015, he became the third rap act to win the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award. West's first six solo studio albums were included on Rolling Stone's 2020 list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. The College Dropout was named the best album of the 2000s by Entertainment Weekly. Graduation was named the best album released between 2002 and 2012 by Complex. 808's and Heartbreak was named one of the 40 most groundbreaking albums of all time by Rolling Stone. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy was named the best album of the 2010s by the AV. Club, Yeezus was the most critically acclaimed album of 2013 according to Metacritic, and The Life of Pablo was the first album to top the Billboard 200, go platinum in the US, and go gold in the UK via streaming alone.